Jeremiah. Um, chapter 2, I'm going to start at verse 18. And it says, And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor. Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria? To drink the waters of the rivers. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Now therefore, know therefore, and see that, is a, that it is an evil thing and bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in me, saith the Lord God of hosts. For of the old time I have broken thy yoke, and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress, when upon every high hill, and under every green tree, thou wanderest, playing the harlot. Back to verse 18. And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt, to drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria, to drink the waters of the river? Was Egypt a good place for the Hebrews? Plenty of exercise, three <laughs> square meals a day. It was a good paradise. A good workout area. No doubt. Well, you know what? They were pleased with it when they first went there. Well, when they first went there, they were treated as royalty. That's right. But was it God's intent for them to stay? No. For the season. For the season. Mm -hmm. um, but they prospered there. Hmm? They didn't well, want to leave. What do we think of when we compare Egypt? You know, we, we look at Egypt as being, they were enslaved. Well, they were eventually, they were in bondage. Yes. But they had to start off that way. They uh, were captive. They were mistreated. Um, what do we look at here in the world? Sin. Sin, bondage, mm -hmm. enslaved. Looks good at the beginning. Captive. And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt, to drink the waters of Sihor? By sundry miracles, by diverse mercies, by strange deliverances, Jehovah had proved himself to be worthy of Israel's trust. Yet they broke down the hedges with which God had, had enclosed them as a sacred garden. Ah, that, that is very deep. God often puts his protection around us and we fight <clears throat> to get away from it. We sure do. It's there for our, our <clears throat> excuse me, protection, our benefit. Look how much greener it is right over there. We're never... You know, if, oftentimes we're not satisfied. You know, we're we're always searching for something else. Um, there's so many so many people are just unsatisfied you know, with with what they have. Mm -hmm. They always need something else. Always wanting something else. You know, if it's a if it's a thing, a gadget, a whatever. <coughs> you know, a better this or a better that. You know, just not content, not satisfied. And until you know, until we get that relationship with the Lord. 
firm relationship with him, a grounded relationship with him, mm -hmm. we'll always be looking, searching for something else. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, I believe too, if just because we have a good, firm relationship with the Lord, we still have wandering eyes. Yes, we do. And we need to have, you know, just, we need to be praying and seeking Him continually to keep our wandering eyes. Yeah, that's uh, why Paul and, said, I die daily. I have to. Yeah. My flesh would override and have its way if I don't die every day mm -hmm. to the sin, yeah. or to the flesh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've got to, we've got to yield, we've got to yield to the Holy Ghost, you know, we've got to, or we'll be... We do. He's, he's confused on I die daily. Oh. Uh -oh. That means when we say we die daily, we give our, we let the Lord, we commit to the Lord having his way in our life. Yeah. So our flesh doesn't rule and control us and we do the things that our, our flesh wants to that might not be good for us. We have to do that every day, commit every day yep. to live for Christ. Sorry, keep. No, that's okay. Is he okay back there? Got it. Good. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of wear and tear on the body. Ideally. See that? I got it. Is, it. is is that asking for a future many miracles? I was gonna say resurrection every day. So God had a, enclosed them as a sacred garden. They forsook their own true and living God and followed after false gods. Constantly did the Lord reprove them for this infatuation. And our text contains one instance, God's disapproval with them. Only one instance? Wow. Oh. In this text, anyway. What hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of the muddy river. For so it may be translated, Why dost thou wander afar and leave thine own cool stream from Lebanon? Why dost thou forsake Jerusalem and turn aside other places? Why art thou so strangely set on mischief that thou canst, be, that thou canst not be content with the good and healthful but would us follow after that which is evil and deceitful. You know, I don't know if I'm going to finish this, but we really haven't changed. You say that all the time. I know. You know, times have changed, but people have not changed. You know, we, we haven't changed. We still, <coughs> you know, for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, people still seek the easy way, uh, still seeking riches and glory and um, prestige and, you know, um, false gods, wicked devices. People haven't changed <clears throat> since the beginning of time. You know, we, we haven't changed. And it just amazes me how patient God has been with with, with us, with mankind. Um, through all the <clears throat> all the warnings and the guidance and the direction and um, the bad things that happen and God still makes good things happen out of that mm -hmm. and we still seek after the false gods you know, whatever that false god is um, you know, we're all we're all guilty of that we're all sinful beings as, as heavenly minded as we think we are or we want to be um, but we still have that sin nature you know you have to bring that under captivity every day. We have to make a, a conscious decision to seek God every day. 
in his in his grace and his mercy you know, every day. No, we need to not allow our wandering eyes to you know get fixed on the the false gods of this world. But to stay focused on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's the one we need to seek after. That's that's who we need to stay focused on. Not the bright and shiny things of this world. We need to be content and happy with what the Lord has provided for us. And not to look at the the thing over there and how much better we think it might look to us. As chances are, it's not. Chances are, it's not. What the Lord provides for us is exactly what we need. Amen. Exactly what we need. <coughs> You know, we, sometimes we we look at others and what we deem as success, mm -hmm. and and we can we hear the the preaching or we hear the the teaching that well you haven't been given that because maybe you couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. Whereas I like to think of it like this: maybe many of those that in the Lord that are successful are given that because they couldn't handle not having it. And, That's true. That's you know, we all have our different weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We all have our different temptations. We all have our different downfalls. We all have our different strengths. For some, not being able to prosper financially or appear to prosper financially could be destructive to them. Could be a great ruin for them. Yes. Yep. Um, yep. And, for, yes, for some, yep. prospering financially could be destructive. Yep. But just because yep. you're not prospering or what doesn't mean that that's your downfall. It means that maybe that's your strength. Might be. And you're an example to mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't know why we have or don't have. We just mm -hmm. have to trust that God has us in the right place at the right time with the right things. Yep. Yep. God is in control. Yep. God is in control. Yep. It's a good way to look at it. Yep. I thought so. Yep. <laughs> I'd never look at it like well, that before. Just <laughs> You know, we've we've known lots of um, uh, I don't know, you know, poverty-stricken people that have been very unhappy mm -hmm. <laughs> because they were looking at people that um, at, at that time anyway were financially set. I guess you mm -hmm. know they were focused on that uh, the bank account or the shiny shoes or, or right. whatever, you know, just, um, they could not be content being poor. Mm -hmm. um, that is so sad. It is. You know, it is so sad. Um, how often times do we see a financially successful person unhappy because they are poor? <laughs> I wish I was poor. You know, I wish I didn't have any money. Uh, but you know, you know that, but we do hear the financially successful people behind the pulpit saying this is, you know, if you live for God, you'll be blessed, you know, with prosperity. Because that's where their focus is at. We've never heard someone say, if you live for God, you'll be pressed with contentment in, in meagerness. When that's, you know, either way, whatever God has in store for the individual, but we have to make sure that we, we keep it under a godly focus. You're, you know, you're no greater in God's kingdom, whether you're a base or bound. No, no, no. The one blanketing true statement of that is, in that is if you live for God, you will be blessed. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I, we've been hearing... <clears throat> um, if you are nice to people, they'll be nice to you. And if you, you know, give, they'll give to you. That's not true. But that doesn't that does not stop our responsibility. Well, no, we should to still be do those things. We don't do unto others as 
because sometimes doesn't mean they're going to do it back to you. That's right. And sometimes there's lessons in just doing, mm-hmm. being obedient. You know, I mean, just we just have to be obedient to the word, whether we understand it, whether we see people, whether we prosper the way we might see someone else prosper. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. We, no. our responsibility is to be obedient and follow the word of God yes. yep. with a willing heart, delighted. Um, you know, uh, if we are to treat others with you know, kind and, and with respect, and and if they don't treat us like that, then you know that's that's up to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's not up to us. So, <clears throat> you know, just like loving somebody, you can love somebody, but that's not going to make them love you back. Right. Yeah. You know, so. But once you know, once we <clears throat> once we get out of Egypt, you know, we shouldn't be seeking to get back to Egypt. You know, just be happy with, be content, be satisfied with what the good Lord provides for us. And if we find ourselves going back, turn around and run. <laughs> yeah, we may find find that we have to work twice as hard as we used to. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Egypt, yeah, they were enslaved, and uh, however they were treated, and this and that. Um, well, when they left, and they were in the wilderness, I'm sure that was hard. Maybe they weren't enslaved, you know, and, and things like that. But it was hard, mm-hmm. you know. They didn't. Uh, was hard. Um, and obviously they did murmur and complain and want to go back, but you know, once we leave, don't go back. Seek the Lord. He will provide. This is what we need. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right. Let's pray. <coughs> Father, we love and praise you today. Lord, just uh, I pray, Father, that you would help us keep our eyes focused on you, God. Let's keep our attitudes adjusted towards you, Father. And I just pray that you would help us to be content with what you bless us with, Lord. Help us not to seek the what appears to be the greener pastures on the other side and stuff, Father. Help us to be content with what you have for us, Lord. Truly, Lord, what you have for us is the best thing that we can have. Father, we just thank you so much for your goodness. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.